Volcanoes. The origin of Jamaica resides in volcanoes. Are you aware that Jamaica's geology interestingly shows remnants of volcanic history that resides in non-explosive and explosive volcanoes? The reason why this is so interesting is because Volcanoes of explosive origin tend to form in what we consider as subduction zones. Volcanoes of non-explosive origin tend to form in divergent plate boundaries as well as mantle plumes. Examples of both. Divergent plate boundary could be the Cayman Spreading Center. The mantle plume could be the Hawaiian Islands. Now what I want you to take into consideration is that subduction zones and non-subduction zones are not generally close or side and side in jamaica's case especially with my field work as reference in the portland region within mere hundreds of meters i've come across basalt rock which is rock indicative of non-subduction zone and i've come across granite slash granodiorite rock which is rock indicative of subduction zones. This generally should not necessarily be the case. Look at this example of Hawaiian Islands. The Hawaiian Islands are a chain of volcanic islands that are of origin in non-subduction zones. The rock type that predominantly makes up the Hawaiian Islands is that of basalt. Then. Take, for example, Mount Vesuvius in Italy. The rock type of this volcano is considered that of andesite, explosive, example of which exists in subduction zone. In Jamaica's case, again in the Portland region, mere hundreds of meters apart, explosive rock type indicators, non-explosive rock type indicators. Subduction zone, non-subduction zone, close. How is this possible? This reality and question asked is a reason why among the scientists who have studied the geology of Jamaica, there is not that universal agreement in terms of ge the Jamaican geologic origin. For some of them, they are of the view that Jamaica would have been birthed through subduction zone. For others, they are of the view that Jamaica would have been birthed through a mantle plume or hot spot, such as in the Hawaiian region. While there are remnants of both, it is still not fully agreed as to why there may exist subduction and non-subduction -subdu rocks within close proximity. The other theory is that there would have been collision of different segments of Jamaica, such as Eastern Jamaica, Central Jamaica, Western Jamaica. Hence the reason why there exists close proximity of both subduction and non-subduction related igneous rocks. Again, these are only theories. To add another thing into consideration is that in terms of the subduction zone makeup, general morphology, as I would have shown in other videos, you have what we consider as the accretionary zone, the zone of four arc basin, the zone of the volcanic arc, the zone of back arc basin. Uh, in this context, when it comes to the whole aspect of the geology of the rocks that come from subduction zones, this basically is gives rise of the volcanic arc. So. The granodiorite is a remnant of a volcanic arc. It is also said then now that the basalt rock is a remnant of the back arc basin, or what could then also be spreading, upwelling of magma through a back arc basin. This too is plausible. So with that being said, there are three eras of, of, of thought, right? Subduction, so you have mantle plume, you basically will have four arc, volcanic arc, back arc, in terms of giving some essence as it relates to Jamaica's volcanic origin. 
I mean, this that you hear me describing is the case based on rocks that I have come across in both Eastern Jamaica, Central Jamaica, as well as Western Jamaica. The rocks is pretty much very similar. You will see remnants of subduction rocks as well as remnants of non-subduction rocks. Now, going back to Hawaii, what you need to look at in terms of the reference is how it is possible that for years to come, long years to come, Hawaii can actually become similar in terms of its makeup as that of Jamaica. And looking back at these satellite images, you should see that there are elements or parts of Hawaii that have not yet breached the surface. So as such, the igneous rocks, such as the basalt, can more than likely be covered with carbonate rocks or carbonate material. And as it rises through the surface, then you can have the case for Hawaii for geologic time to come. Hundreds upon hundreds of thousands to probably millions of years. You're going to see carbonate rocks at the top. And then as you drill below, you have volcanic rocks at the bottom which is possibly, uh, which is actually the case for segments of Jamaica as well, where, you know, we have, you know, carbonate zones and then underneath we have volcanic basement rock. This theory of occurrence is also supported by the reality that the further away a volcanic plume moves away from its source, the slower it tends to move, which then now can result in collision taking place. This video is supposed to bring to your attention the complexity as it pertains to the volcanic origin as well as the overall geologic origin of countries of the world on a whole. What I'd like to now finally mention is this, that the mantle plume theory discussed does not have to arise in open water or, you know, the seafloor. It can also occur on land that has already breached the surface. Example, popular example of this is the Yellowstone region in America. Now, the reason why I mention this is because what it is that is said is that if you are having volcanic origin as a result of mantle plume rising on continental land, this can be as a result of weakening of the crust directly over the mantle plume, stretching. This stretching can arise as a result of earthquake activity. So I'm basically going to say that what it is is the case now in terms of the statements is that Jamaica, in terms of its volcanic reality, is that of extinct volcanoes. However, where I'm going is that with earthquake activity, as well as the reality that Jamaica resides within close proximity of an interplate boundary zone as well as the Ganave microplate having part of it going through the island then deformation stretching buckling of different segments of Jamaica's mainland and offshore can be the result or is actually the result hence volcanic activity for the future should not be ruled out